The Jurassic Park films have been one of the most profitable franchises in history. With the first two directed by Steven Spielberg, it paved the way for dinosaurs to be among mainstream media like they never were before. From the iconic Tyrannosaurus Rex breakout, to the terrifying tall grass scene or the Spinosaurus fight, to the more recent Indominus Rex rampage, this series has delivered some very memorable moments. After the lackluster release of Jurassic World Dominion, we were led to believe the franchise as we know it has ended. But is that to be believed? Or are they setting things up for another trilogy? That's what I'll briefly discuss in this video. As a fan of the Jurassic Park films myself, ever since the third one came out, I waited almost 15 years for the sequel, which was announced over and over and over again. It was, fortunately, rebooted to the Jurassic World we all know and love, I presume. Contrary to the first trilogy, which tried to depict the dinosaurs as accurate as possible, while still making them look monstrous, the new trilogy quite deviated from that, and focused on the genetic aspect of creating these creatures. I would debate they even downgraded some species, on purpose, but that's besides the point. Indominus Rex, Indoraptor and even Scorpius Rex from the Camp Cretaceous Netflix show are all genetically engineered dinosaurs that mix a lot of the most well-known theropods DNA. They are essentially made for purposes that differ a lot from John Hammond's vision for the first park. And that's okay, I find the idea quite interesting, while a bit overdone at this point. For the last entry of the Jurassic World franchise, they abandoned the idea of hybrids and opted for the idea of accurate dinosaurs. I mean, this film tried something new with a very cool Battle at Big Rock short film and a very inaccurate prologue, featuring a battle between a fuzzy Jurassic World T-Rex and a... Uh, this is supposed to be a Giganotosaurus. I'll be honest, the Jurassic World evolution design is far superior in every way, but that's besides the point. Patch. When you are trying to depict an extinct animal as accurately as possible, the least you can do is at least try to. I mean, putting feathers on a GP raptor style animal is not what you can call a believable creature. There are many complaints to be made about Dominion, but I'd rather try to focus on what the studios can do to salvage the series, and maybe set things up for another trilogy. First idea, focus on the horror. For those who don't know, the Jurassic Park books are much more visceral than what's shown in the films. Delving deep into the horror aspect is something that can bring the audience back to when they were seeing the first Jurassic Park film for the first time. The dread of having to stay still while a 9-ton apex predator is looking you in the eyes is something that does give the parents nightmares. The raptors are perfect for horror sequences. Even a real velociraptor could be a contender for a very suspenseful scene, but a utoraptor would do the job much better. Shout out to Primitive War. If you've been on YouTube searching for Jurassic Park content, you have probably came across Jurassic Park Analog Horror, which is genius. Let's face it, a Jurassic Park horror film would probably not gross as much as a normal JP film, but it would help the public to see dinosaurs as something more than a child's interest. Although the JP films are not made for kids, they surely are family friendly. Fortunately, we're currently in a time where the audience is demanding more R-rated films, and these are grossing more than some of the PG-13 ones. Also, make the dinosaurs accurate. It's about time to show a feathered dromaeosaur hunting some pesky humans. I'm all for it. Second idea, a prequel. While hard to see this one turned into a trilogy, it would go along very well as a standalone film, once again delving into the horrors and accidents that happened during the park's creation. In the first film, Rexy, or Roberta, is already five years old. The raptors are adult specimens too. This idea could work extremely well with a believable cast, it would be nice to see some 80s style JP dinosaur horror. But studios seem more interested in investing in something long term. I mean, this prequel idea would hardly have power for two sequels. But it's an interesting path to take. Looking back at the origins of everything, it's always a safe bet. Third idea. Mainland Mayhem. Hear me out. We already had this, or it was intended for us to have. The Dino Tracker videos looked like the type of film everyone expected. Instead, we had the original cast going after giant locusts. Don't get me wrong, I love seeing some giant bugs. But this plot point was a total waste of time. Even more so when we had Blue having a baby and literally Helen Grant, a raptor expert in the same film. I promise I will not go back to Dominion. Moving on. 
I'd love to see some dinosaurs attack type of film. And I think JP's dinosaurs can fit this style. This said, I hardly believe they want to do something as gory as that. But would be cool to have this style of stories. Dinosaurs attacking people all over the world. Filling in the roles of some cryptids, like the Mokel and Bembe. Even if it turns out to be PG-13, I would be okay with that. And possibly, this has some trilogy material to work with. If they decide to go on that direction. Here are some of the most realistic approaches the studios can have with the franchise. As long as no humanoid hybrids or dinosaur wars get their way into the series, it will be okay enough, in my opinion. As some of you know, I myself write and illustrate a dinosaur comic book series called Congo, which follows a group of Portuguese explorers in the Congo fighting for their lives, as legendary creatures await them in the shadows. That's what this channel has been all about, actually. And I'm in no way, shape or form trying to seem like a snob who thinks he can write better than any of the Jurassic Park writers, or have more original ideas. I just seem to agree with the public and what it wants, because I'm a part of the audience too. Why did, for example, Spider-Man No Way Home had all the success it did? Because the people behind it actually listened to the audience and what the audience wanted. Of course, it should be okay to surprise the people, but in a good way. Now, I want to listen to your ideas. Don't forget to comment them down below. And if you like this video, also tell me, so I can delve deeper into the Jurassic Park dinosaurs lore that we all know and love. Don't forget to like, subscribe and activate the bell icon so I can keep doing this. See you next time.